Next on the Broadway show, it's Broadway's biggest night, the 2024 Tony Awards, and we're celebrating with the First Timers Club, some of this year's hottest first time nominees. Plus, Stereophonic rocks. We're getting to know the stars of the most Tony nominated play in Broadway history. And the stars of The Outsiders, merrily we roll along, Hell's Kitchen, and so much more. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. Broadway's Biggest Night is back, and we're talking all things Tonys on this special edition of The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. It's our Tony Awards preview special, and we're breaking down the biggest races. Here's what's up for Best New Musical. This girl is on fire. Fire, fire. Hell's Kitchen. Illinois. Drink if they called you a nag. Drink if they called you a slut or a shrew. Suffs. The Outsiders. When I saw you, I felt wild, 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 wild. Water for Elephants. Now here's what's up for Best New Play. Jaja's African Hair Braiding. Mary Jane. Mother Play. Prayer for the French Republic. Stereophonic. And let's talk about Stereophonic because it's rocking Broadway and the Tony Awards. In fact, it's now the most nominated play in Tony's history. Stereophonic is the story of an up and coming rock band in the 70s on the brink of superstardom, and it features music by Arcade Fire's Will Butler. Stereophonic rolls into Tony Night with 13 nominations. We caught up with the stars at an epic photo shoot. Ever since we first started rehearsals, I was like, this is gonna work. I'm not worried about this play. I know that people are going to love it. Every day, every time we get together on stage, you can feel everyone dumping love into the thing. There's a kind of unicorn feeling about the project. It's a big, very acting forward play but with music and that music is rock and roll and the characters are rock stars. I love music from this era in the 60s. I love Simon and Garfunkel. I love vocal harmonies so this play is really a nice way to you know engage with that. To have my Broadway debut and to get nominated myself and then for the show to be the most nominated play ever um, I think it's rare that you're part of something that is as good as the hype. It's it's quality work. Just considering how much I connected you with the first time I read it, I think it's, I, I'm so grateful, but it's not like a complete surprise to me that people are really affected by this piece. The Tony's feels like the cherry on top of this huge sundae that I've been been eating. It's important, I think, for hard work to be recognized and celebrated. And I'm just glad these are the only people that I want to celebrate it with. Let's talk about first timers. Paul Wintorek spent time with four of the amazingly talented new members of the elite club known as Tony nominees. I feel like you're a very accomplished actor. You've been able to do many things on stage, on film and TV. What does this moment mean for you? It's a, it's a great opportunity to sort of pause a little bit and, 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 to, and to look back a little bit at how incredibly fortunate I've been. Yeah, and hopefully sort of like refocus about like what, you know, what, what I haven't done and, and, and what, uh, what the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years could look like. This play sort of came about, this is a play appropriate, it's been done sort of off Broadway and regionally a lot. It's actually considered a revival, even though it's new to Broadway. I wonder at this point in your career, what sort of excites you about a role? What about this role? made you want to commit. It doesn't happen that often where everything sort of comes together. And so, you know, I've been doing this long enough to know that the combination of script and director and cast and design team and theater, when it all comes together, that's really special. And so you want to you want to nurture that and you want to you want to continue. 
as someone who's been admiring your career for many years, this Thank is you. a really cool new moment for you. How are you feeling? Just, it's dizzying. It's unbelievable. It's so unexpected. There's a part of me that's like, now? <laughs> <laughs> no, as you're climbing up the ambition ladder, you think, you know, you're an impatient and you want it to, to, to come for you sooner. And then it just doesn't, so you give up thinking that it's supposed to yeah. and you just go from one job to the next and there's a good script and there's a good thing and then suddenly they're putting you forward they're putting clothes on you and jewelry and you're you <laughs> feel like a queen and you have no country you know like you did prayer for the french republic off broadway mm -hmm. first and i know that a lot of people said to you this should go to broadway but i'm sure you've heard that many times over your career about <laughs> endless yeah, shows right yeah a lot of things <laughs> and, it, and it was a, a great matriarch role very meaty part do mm -hmm. you when you see certain roles Roles. Do you still get that fire like, I really want to do that? Like, oh, yeah. It was just one of those roles for oh, you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes the role meets you at the moment in your life that you're ready to, and it asks everything that you have in your paint box, in your toolbox, and more. And it was one of those. You forever are now Tony nominated. That's gonna follow you, or maybe Tony winning at some point. How's life changed at all? It, ha it hasn't really changed. Doing the show I'm, every night. I'm steady. I'm steady with it. You know, I don't let too much get to me. You know, because it's not about me at the end of the day. You know, Tony nominated. There's a lot of people behind that. You know, a lot of support behind that. And I just want to make sure that when I step on stage at night, that all that support is felt. You know, and it's given back to the people who pay. You know, dollars to sit in those seats. I want them to leave feeling something. The people in that theater are losing their minds. I love this show, The Outsiders, <laughs> but it's so fun to watch. Um, like now there's honored, honored with all these Tony nominations. When you saw this role uh, on the page, did you think this might be something special? I felt like it was, it might be something special when it was, when I was told about it. Brody Grant, who plays Ponyboy, we were, I haven't done a musical in a while, but I was workshopping another musical and he was sitting right next to me. He told me he had just finished this musical at La Jolla called The Outsiders. And immediately I perked up because that's the first novel I read in seventh grade. I'm like, The Outsiders? I'm like, slow down. I was like, they got black greasers? He was like, yeah, the greasers are multi-ethnic, the socials are white. I was like, this is, this is already interesting to me. This is crazy. I was like, but they're young. He's like, not everybody older playing younger because of the times and you know the, the feeling of it all. And I was like, uh. <laughs> I was like, this this might be for your boy. Right. It's taken a bit to get here, and a lot of great work has happened in that time. But to be here now, how, how does it feel? How does it feel emotionally? First of all, I never expected Spamalot to happen, period. Right. So right. Spamalot wasn't like a dream role. Lady of the Lake wasn't like something that I had aspired to do. I never thought that it was a part that I would do. So when it happened and then we moved to Broadway, it was like, whoa, I didn't even have time to think. Getting nominated is the most special part. Winning is like great, but getting that pin that day was really meaningful. I feel like you like red carpets. I, I like, do. You like getting dolled up. So how do you prepare for something like the Tony Awards? I mean, is the Lady of Lake, is there a lot of like water treatments? Is it, is it like being in? Oh, plunge. Well, was I at ready? the gym this morning? Yes, I was. Like my mom was always, I always think of, especially this year my mom passed a year ago, and I think about how I grew up watching her. She was so glamorous and beautiful, and she took such pride in her appearance. And so, especially because she's not here during this time to watch this, I, uh, I wanted to show up and really honor her. So every time I step on a red carpet, I think of her and I'm you know, representing her life. And so that, her legacy. So when we work together, when we put these outfits together, it's like, oh, well, you know, she's always there. And she, she would love every single thing I've worn, including this and whatever I plan to wear for the Tonys, which uh, we will see. One of the first timers you just heard from was Joshua Boone. He's nominated for his performance in The Outsiders. But let's keep talking about that show. Charlie Cooper took a walk with the Tony-nominated director of The Outsiders, Danya Tamor. Danya, what I think is really inspiring about you is that you're one of many, at this point, um, female directors oh, on yes. Broadway right now. How does that feel for you? It feels so good. I think that I was talking to a friend of mine, Whitney White, who's another Tony-nominated director. Yeah. What feels good is that we can say, like, you can take it to the bank. Like, yes. we got this. Like, we can lead things. They can be commercially successful. You can trust us. One of my favorite things about this show is that, that I feel like anybody could see it and relate to it because it does explore um, what it feels like to be a teenager. Yes. I want to know a little bit about what that 
I guess, time period for you was like, and did you feel like an outsider? And were you able to tap into that, if so, for this production? So I really, once I got the script and the score and read the, the book, Susie Hinton's novel, it like unlocked to me what it felt like to be 14 years old. And what I tried to do when working on the show was like bring myself back into that headspace yeah. and direct it through the eyes of my 14 year old self. Like try to be honest, try to be not hold back. Um, I think something that Susie Hinton did was like she was unstinting in the effects of violence on the lives of yeah. young people. You know, when I was 14, 13 actually, uh, one of my very good friends committed suicide. And that's a theme in this book. And I think that that's something I've obviously thought about a lot through the making of this, like how to offer that truth to people who may have experienced that and offer like a way to heal and move through it. Yeah. And so that aspect of the story really resonates to me. I think about my friend a lot while making it. Um, and I think that if I had had the outsiders in my life in this form, I think it would have been healing and helped me through that period of time. Yeah. Um, so I think the book is an incredible piece of literature and that's what we've tried to bring to the stage in a visceral and physical and emotional way. Well, I feel like you are literally the perfect director for this show and congratulations on all the success. Thank you so much. The Outsiders nominated for 12 Tony Awards, including Best Musical. The musical featuring so many incredible Broadway debuts, including Brody Grant. He plays Pony Boy and is up for Best Lead Actor. To get to be an artist and get to do something I love that I'm truly passionate about, a story I really connect with, that doesn't come around all the time. And in a role like Pony Boy that is so, I mean, I sometimes say he's like the 14 year old, you know, Jean Valjean mixed with Melchior from Spring Awakening. It is like kind of that vibe. It's the dream role that I never knew I wanted. The Outsiders is also Tony nominated for its incredible choreography because the rumble is unlike anything you've seen before. Fight choreography for me, it's, it's kind of like, if it's not just right, kind of takes you out. And if it's too good for me, I'm like, how do they do that? And it takes me out even in that way. So when we were thinking about the rumble, we were like, how do we not focus on you know, trying to trick the audience into making sure that it looks real, but focusing on the impact of the rumble. By the way, if you can't make it to Broadway, The Outsiders is coming to you. The musical set to launch on a national tour in 2025. We've got more Tony Awards to talk about coming up in just a few, but first the secrets of this year's Tony nominees. <laughs> Secret talent. Can't tell you. I can bark like a small dog very well. I know you want to hear it. Are you ready? I can do this and stay that way for a long, long time. I'm like really flexible. I can um, play songs um, with my hands. Thanks for sticking around. I'm Tamsin Fidel. We're on the road to the Tony Awards. Here's the best musical revival category. Cabaret at the Kit Kat Club. Gutenberg. Merrily We Roll Along. The Who's Tommy. And in Best Play Revival, Appropriate. An Enemy of the People. Probably Victorious, a non Confederate romp through the cotton patch. History is happening on Broadway. It Suffs, the epic musical about the 1913 women's suffrage movement. Suffs is nominated for six Tony Awards, including Best Musical. Shayna Taub wrote the book, music and lyrics for the show, and she's one of the stars. And Suffs is also nominated for Best Costumes. We caught up with costume designer Paul Taswell. The look of it is dating from 1912 to 1920. As a designer, you know, I'm always looking at fashion and what is trending, and uh, that's very important for me, and I love it. But then, you know, when I'm uh, researching and exploring a specific year or period, I'm drawn to style that appeals to me, and also aligning that with the character and making sure that that 
that there's a connection. Being very aware all the way through for the audience to engage with these characters and really fall in love with them. It's very easy to Google or look up the, these actual women and find photographs of who they, who they were, what they looked like, what they wore. I also have to acknowledge the actor that's playing that role. So I take a flavor of what I'm getting out of the research and apply that to the um, actor that's playing the role. And then with that marriage, we create a look that seems to work well for the, uh, for the production. Merrily We Roll Along is a big hit and one of the most celebrated shows of the Tony Awards season with seven nominations. Merrily is nominated for Best Musical Revival, but when it first came out more than 40 years ago, it was a notorious flop, even though it features the songs of Stephen Sondheim. He gave our production his seal of approval and wanted it to come here, and I was working with him um, on it uh, before he, he left us so suddenly. I feel both massive elation and also a bit heartbroken that he's not there to share it. I really didn't ever think that I would do Sondheim. I thought that would always just be a thing I listened to and loved, but not actually get to do. And so, yeah, to have, I, and I don't think there's like a, a better part for me than this in the whole canon. These days, with its renewed reputation, Merrily We Roll Along features an incredible cast of A-list stars and longtime Broadway talent. And in fact, the lead trio is all nominated for Tonys. I've never felt so free as an actor um, than in this show. And I think that's largely in part to playing these friends and us having this real friendship out there and this trust that we have um, because they're both such incredible actors and I feel so safe and I feel like we're always just right there so anything can happen and like we've got it. It hits you differently, I think at different moments in your life, but even in the eight shows a week, from night to night, it hits you differently. And it becomes, I mean, that's maybe part of why it feels so personal to see the show and to watch the show is because it, he allows that personal connection to happen. Merrily plays its final performance at the Hudson Theater, July 7th. You're watching The Broadway Show. We're back in just a few. Let's hear it for New York. Hell's Kitchen is the most nominated musical at this year's Tonys, with 13 nods, including Best Musical. It's a matter of extreme importance, my first teenage love affair. That's Shoshana Bean singing Teenage Love Affair. She's nominated for Best Featured Actress in a Musical. Of course, Hell's Kitchen features the hit songs of Alicia Keys. The musical is a semi-autobiographical look at the Grammy Award winner's life on stage, just blocks from where she grew up. I grew up born and raised in Hell's Kitchen, and, and Broadway is, is kind of, you know, for me, growing up in Hell's Kitchen, it was crazy because there was a lot of darkness, but there was also this possibility that I think Broadway represented. Malia Joy Moon plays Allie. She's up for Best Lead Actress in a Musical. Getting to know her past the music has been, I'm honored to be here with her. She's got this grounded spirit and she's such a superstar at the same time. So she knows the ropes and she knows what she wants and she's so heavily involved in this project. I mean, it's fabulous. Time now to look at another big award, our annual Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards. The results are in and you've picked the winners. Every year we give theater fans a chance to choose their favorite shows and stars of the season. The entire process is guided by the fans' votes, including picking the nominees. We caught up with the winners at the Audience Choice Awards party. It's the best type of award to get, like either like your fans or your peers. It's like, no, it's really, to have something that has audience and water for elephants on it is, I'll cherish this forever. I mean, it's awesome. See a full list of those winners over at Broadway.com. The Broadway Show will be back in just a sec. New York City Center is celebrating 30 years of encores, and right now the 30th season culminates with the revival of Titanic. It's now open. Here's Perry Sook. Today we're at the Sitz Probe. We have the, you know, the cast with the orchestra for the first time. What is the significance in the process, you know, for you for this step? Oh my God. I mean, it's always like a, a really amazing moment to, to blend orchestra and singers. But for this, it's, it's like monumental. It's gonna be totally explosive. I mean, I, everyone has already said, I'm sorry if I'm just gonna be in tears the whole time, but I really feel like all of us are gonna be very emotional. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, you're the one in charge of the score, which is to yeah. me the, the heart of this yeah. piece. Why, why should people come out and see Titanic? This score combined with this story, I think just, it's musical theater uh, uh, on, on a large scale, really in, smartly and intelligently written, and I think it's gonna be beautifully performed. My goal is that it is an excellent musical event. And that's gonna do it for us, but the Tonys are Sunday night with returning host Ariana DeBose. If you wanna see extended versions of all the interviews you just saw or get tickets, head over to broadway.com. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.